So you want to make a Jason mask, huh? Well, I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to make it easy for you. I'm Big Hush. For those of you who don't know me, I make masks. I've made a whole lot of masks and you can see them all on this channel. What I want to show you is how to make a good looking Friday the 13th Part 3 Jason Voorhees style hockey mask that is well within budget and doesn't require much skill to accomplish. Now, if you want to make a mask that is extremely detailed, super particular to exactly how it looks in the movie. It looks like it just came straight off the movie set, is the perfect shape, the correct everything. And this video isn't for you. The mask you're gonna make watching this video is simple, passable, and is obvious what it's supposed to be, but it's not gonna be a screen accurate, perfect replica of the movie mask. All right, obviously the first thing that you're gonna need is a mask, a blank mask in particular. And this is the kind that we're gonna be using in this video. These are the cheap PVC plastic made in China masks. These are the ones that I sell in my Etsy shop. So if you wanna go get one from me, please do that. Um, if you order these off of Amazon or eBay, you can find plenty of sellers who sell these exact same type of masks, but just be warned that not all of them are the same. They look the same in the pictures, but you need to be careful because there are discrepancies, believe it or not. It's obviously not a screen accurate mold or shape. Now you can certainly get screen accurate masks, but what you're gonna get into with that is your price going up. For the purpose of this video, I'm trying to keep everything as cheap as possible for you, but if you really wanna get into a bigger budget and more commitment to making your mask accurate, then look for ABS plastic plastic masks, those are much more solid plastic, or you can look into resin and fiberglass masks, but again, your price is gonna go up. So that's up to you, your budget's gonna jump, but you'll get a more solid mask and also a more accurate mask to what it looks like in the film as far as shape and alignment of things. Something to keep in mind with these though is that the straps are always included and the snaps are already in place and everything, which is nice because when you buy those custom molded masks, a lot of times the sellers only sell the blanks and then you'll have to apply snaps and buy straps and do all that as an addition to your project. Project. The next thing you'll need is some sandpaper and you can go buy sandpaper at any hardware store and you can find it at Walmart, any hobby store. But the one thing to keep in mind is the grit of the sandpaper that you use. As you can see, this PVC plastic has a really slick surface. You can see that shine on it. And when you put paint on that without sanding it first, it takes nothing to scratch the paint off. It's so easy to chip the paint off. So sanding the mask is not a requirement by any means, but I highly, highly recommend it just to make sure your paint sticks well and you don't have to be super careful when handling your mask later. I recommend 120 or higher because that way you'll scuff up the surface without creating too much damage or tearing up the plastic. The lower you go in grit number, the harsher it's going to be on the surface of your mask. All right, the next thing you need is some gray primer. And I say it needs to be gray because this is gonna serve two purposes on the mask, not just as a primer to make the paint stick. We've sanded the mask, so ideally the spray paint, the actual color of the mask is gonna stick really well. We don't necessarily need a primer, but what we're gonna use this for is also kind of a base coat to reveal some dirt and to make some contrast for the damage that we add to the mask towards the end. Because we're doing a part three mask, we need some meringue spray paint. Now this is a little tougher to find. I always find it at Lowe's. It's always there at Lowe's hardware store. I used to be able to find it at Walmart, but the last few times I've checked, it hasn't been there. So your Walmart may or may not have it. To me, meringue is a, is a great match for the color of the part three mask. I've also found this at Hobby Lobby before, but I hate buying spray paints at Hobby Lobby because they have them locked up behind the case and you got to ask somebody for permission to access them. And I cannot stand that. I get that they're trying to keep kids safe from whatever they're doing with their spray paints and stuff, but I can't stand having to call down a clerk and wait for them to open up the spray paint case for me. But that's another issue for another video and another topic and another day. Maybe I'll start a podcast bent about it. All right, so once the mask is primed and it's got a base coat of color on it, you're gonna go with some chevrons, the triangles on the mask that you see in the movie. Um, they're a few different ways to go with this and most of them are available in my Etsy shop. I don't know who's selling the vinyl chevron decals, who, who else is selling them. I'm sure there's other sellers out there. I really haven't looked. I offer vinyl chevron decals in all the different styles of the movie, the correct size that they should be. And if you don't want decals that stick directly on the mask, I also offer vinyl stencils so you can paint them on here. And there's also a digital download of a PDF template for all the different chevrons from the films if you wanna just have your own template to use forever and ever. So once the mask is sanded, it's primed, it's got a base coat of color, we put the chevrons on, we're gonna have to add some damage to scuff it up and make it look similar to how it looked in the movie. Now for that, you need a knife of some sort. I'm gonna get this as close to my eye as possible because I'm an idiot. I like an X-Acto knife, a hobby knife like this. These are fantastic, but if you don't have that and you don't wanna go buy one, just use a pocket knife, 
use a kitchen knife, whatever. You gotta have something sharp in the house, I'm sure. Be very careful with it. All you need is something sharp that we can scrape paint off of the mask with. Now this part does take a while, but you can put as much or as little effort into it as you want to. If you want the mask to be clean, then you don't have to do much damage at all. And if you want it to be really damaged, then just spend time doing it. You just basically eyeball it and feel it out as you go. This that I'm doing here is basically just the general idea of the damage. You know, some of the stuff is in the right spot, but otherwise I'm just kind of winging it and, and going for it. But if you really want to make it perfect and match the movie, then you're going to have to do some, some studying of some still frames and some, some scenes from the movie. Don't forget to scrape the paint off the bottom two snaps as well. Originally, I wasn't gonna include this in the, in the process here, but I just can't resist adding some dirt to the mask, so this is kind of an audible, but if you wanna add dirt to your mask, you can use something as simple as a paper towel and just some dark brown acrylic craft paint. I basically just smear it that way when I start applying it to the mask, it comes off very, very faintly and not globbing on. And this, you pretty much just feel out. You just kind of rub it on the mask, you smack the mask with your hand and jab at it and smudge at it and just add dirt and make it look pretty natural because it goes on so faintly and so gradually. Also, this is something that I love to do is add some scratching and some damage to the dirt paint. To me, that's just a great touch of realism to the wear and tear here is if you add some scratches and some a little bit of damage to the dirt that you've applied. All right, for the last step to finalize this thing, you need some spray lacquer. Uh, at least this is what I prefer. If you wanted to use a clear coat, clear gloss spray, that's fine too. There's, there's several options, Krylon, Rust-Oleum, whatever. This is something I love to do with every mask once I've done the clear coat layer. There's always this little bit of grainy coarseness to the surface, just almost like little specks of salt here and there. So I take a plain piece of paper here, it's just a scratch pad piece of paper, but you could use printer paper or whatever, and lightly just basically sand the entire mask with that. And you're basically just buffing it out, just making a super, super smooth clear coat surface for the finish. All right, how'd your mask turn out? Or how's it looking right now? I hope you're making some killer stuff out there and being really creative with it. And I also hope everything is great in your world. Thank you for watching the video. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.